Hey guys, and a big kia ora to you all. I'm the Bento Buster, a Kiwi in Japan, and today we're making some kimchi fried rice. Today I'm going to follow a recipe from the Aaron and Claire channel in Korea, and let's hope that it turns out okay. First, you're going to need some kimchi, which of course is a no-brainer. Now I'm going to be making one portion of fried rice, so the big question is, how much kimchi do I actually need? Well, to start off, I'm going to be using 50 grams of kimchi, and if I need any more, I can just add it later. And to that, I've added some soy sauce, followed by some oyster sauce. Then in goes some sugar and some MSG. Then finally, in goes some Korean chili powder, which is actually very tasty and mild. Now I'm just going to mix this all together, and that is going to form the base of my kimchi fried rice. Now it doesn't look like much, but remember this is only one portion because the bento basta is just a one-man production. So if you plan to be making dinner for more than one person, then you just double it or triple it or quadruple it or whatever. I'm sure you get the gist. Now my fry pan is nice and hot, in goes some oil and of course some green onions. Okay, now it's time to add some chicken to the fry pan. And this is shredded salad chicken, which is of course is made for salads. This chicken is already cooked, so it won't take long to heat up. I'm using chicken because I had it on hand, but pork belly, bacon, beef, or even spam will do. Once the meat's cooked, or reheated in this case, it's time to add the kimchi. Then give it all a good mix. You want that chicken totally covered with that kimchi mixture. And when it's all nicely coated, it's time to add the rice. As I've mentioned in previous videos, the best type of rice is to use day-old rice. And by that I mean cooked rice that you've left out on the counter to cool down and dry out. But if you can't be bothered, these little packs of microwavable rice will do the trick nicely. It's perfectly portioned and it has not been in the microwave. That means it's nice and dry, so it's perfect for this dish. I'll incorporate this all together over the heat and pretty soon we'll have some kimchi fried rice. Oh, and I've just added another 50 grams of kimchi because I feel like it. So to recap, there's a total of 100 grams of kimchi in this dish. How about that? All right, and to finish it off, I just added a dash of sesame oil. Not too much, just a dash. Okay, and from the looks of it, that's about it. I think we're done. How about that? Kimchi fried rice. Now it's time to plate this up. Off camera, I put the rice into a bowl, then inverted it onto my plate. And the result is this, a nice dome of kimchi fried rice. I'm just gonna jazz it up with a sprinkling of finely chopped green onions, then top it off with a fried egg. Okay, now that looks pretty good, but wait, there's more. I'm just gonna sprinkle on some fine strips of nori seaweed. Okay, I've finished. And somewhere under there is the kimchi fried rice. Yep, somewhere under there. I think it's under the egg. Okay, apart from the nori on top, I think I followed the recipe to a T. Well, I hope I did. All done, and now it's time for the taste test. It's a bit tricky, but I want some egg and some rice on my spoon at the same time, aka the double whammy. Well, that looks good enough, so let's see what it tastes like. Mmm, can you guess what it tastes like? That's right, it's kimchi-licious. I'm no mathematician, but the equation is simple. Kimchi plus rice plus egg plus chicken equals deliciousness. Oh, and another thing, it's spicy, but it's not too spicy. It's just right. As you can see, I put Aaron and Claire's recipe to the test and it came through with flying colors. Yep, it was definitely kimchi-licious. So guys, if you're in the mood for some kimchi fried rice, I recommend you give this a go. It's super easy and yummo. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.